Hi everyone, this is an IS-201 video for VBA. The purpose of this video is to help you put together several, several of the topics you've learned either in class or through watching the videos here online. Let me show you exactly the ones I'm referring to. So, before you watch this video, you should either A, have come to the first two days of class for VBA, which includes the intro to VBA, enabling macros, developer tab, learning the basics of the VBA environment, basics of variables and creating subs, and then how to add subs to buttons or macros to buttons. So you should have been through that already, either in class or by watching these videos here online. And you should also have gone through the second day of class, which includes navigation, conditionals, and boxes. So if you didn't make it to this class, I at least want you to go through and uh, watch the videos for cell navigation, message box, input boxes, navigating through cells, columns, roads, and then conditionals, if statements. So let me give you some advice for those who are, are struggling and looking for help here. You need to not only go through these videos as well as the readings in your packet, but actually practice and do the things that are being done in the videos. Open up an Excel file, uh, save it as macro enabled, and actually copy along and, and do everything that you see us do for practice. So, assuming you've done all that, uh, this video we're going to put everything together into a complete uh, task and use each of these techniques that you've learned. So, let's begin by opening Excel. So, here's the Excel file template or examples that you may or may not have done on day one. This is I think actually the same uh, example you have in your packet reading. So this is a flow chart and it's been mapped to VBA code. So we're going to replicate this and then alter it and change it and just practice each of the things we learn. But the point is I want you to learn how to translate a flow chart into an actual function. So Alt F11 or developer tab and open Visual Basic Editor. I'm going to maximize this close these windows out and start at the beginning. So we have various places over here we can write VBA code in. Okay, you can write it in any of them. However, there's uh, implications for how you reference cells. Uh, so let's actually begin by creating a new module from scratch and putting the code in there. So I'm going to go to insert module. Module 3, as always, we're going to add option explicit up at the top so that we keep our uh, the memory we use in our programs as small as possible. So let's make a sub and call it calc net a. enter. Okay, let's go back and take a look at this chart again. So the idea is we're going to start, we're going to collect the, let me scroll up so you can see this. We're going to collect the employee name, the gross pay, and the tax rate. And using that, we're then going to calculate what the total tax is and then what the net pay is and, pr and output that back to the user. So here's our steps. Here's our data collection, our data output, and our processing box. Pretty straightforward. So back to our code. First thing we want to do is I want you guys to learn the input-output processing model for every one of your functions. Okay, we follow the same model for your flowcharts. Every flowchart, every function, will have these same three steps. And if you're stuck and you have no clue where to begin on a task, begin by memorizing these three steps. Well, if you have these three steps, you can begin by organizing your thoughts into these. So first of all, step one is going to be to collect the inputs. Okay, now notice I have this little single quote right here. If you haven't covered this already, the single quote allows us to create comments in the code. Notice that all of this turned green because of the single quote in front of it. That means that the compiler for VBA will ignore anything following a single quote when it runs our function. Why would we want it to ignore it? So that we can put text in there to describe what it is that we're doing. The people who edit your functions later will bless your name forever if you comment your code very well so that it's clear what you're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and put my three steps in here. First I'm going to collect the inputs. Next, I'm going to perform the processing. 
and lastly, output the results. Everything we do will fit into one of these three steps. Okay, so let's begin collecting the inputs. There's really two steps involved in collecting the inputs, and I've divided this into step 1A and 1B, and you can do the same if you want to. Uh, again, you don't have to write this down, but I'm going to set this as 1A, which means create the variables. So, remember the first task in a flowchart? We input variables. We have to create the name storage locations for those variables. No problem, we use the dim statement. So we know that we're going to need the employee name. Now we have data types. What type of data should this be? Hopefully you've watched the video on variables and you understand the differences among data types. Because an employee name contains text, we're going to call it a string. Um, to save space, I'm going to put this all on the same line. So you can dim each variable separately on separate lines, or you can put them all on the same line separated by commas, but you have to include the data type on each one. So we collect their name. We obviously need to collect their gross pay. And we're going to use the currency data type, which is like the single data type because it includes decimals, but only two decimals. And then we also need to collect the tax rate. Now you might be asking yourself, why isn't tax rate an input from setup? If you remember that term from flowcharting, input from setup are basically constants or variables that don't ever change uh, during a, a function or a process. If this was uh, an order calculator, then I would agree a tax rate should be an input from setup because it's likely not going to change. However, um, we'll have different tax rates depending on what their uh, income is. Uh, so we're going to make tax rate a variable, and it should be a single because it's a percentage. Okay, so that's step 1A. Step 1B is to then assign variables, ass excuse me, assign values to the variables. Okay, sometimes we call this um, initialize, initializing the variables. Okay, so uh, employee name, how should we collect it? Well, we use what's called an assignment statement. An assignment statement is an equal sign, and whatever variable or value is on the left side of the equal sign gets set to whatever value or variable is on the right side of the equal sign. So we want to set employee name to something they give us. We can either uh, have people enter it as a value in the worksheet, or we could use the input box and ask them for it. Let's go ahead and use the input box uh, this time through. So input box. And we want to say, what is the employee's name? OK, input box is a built-in function in the VBA library. So just like we're creating a calc net pay function or sub, input box is a function or sub. When you call it, that's what we mean by running the function. When you call it, it'll return whatever value is entered into the function. Or in other words, what's entered into that text box. So what's entered in the text box will be stored in this variable en. OK, so that's en. Let's go ahead and ask him for gross pay as well. Um, well, no, let's do, uh, let's, let's do it uh, differently. Let's ask for gross pay in, from cell A, uh, B1. So we're going to set this equal to a value they place in the worksheet, B1. Okay, so let's make sure there's a place for people to enter that in. So back here, I'm going to move this out of the way, scroll up, and say now in cell B1 will be gross pay. Let's give it some extra room. Maybe right align this. Okay, and that's where they'll have to enter it. All right, next. Let's ask for the tax rate in cell B2. Let's also write a line, give it a border. Okay, so they'll enter those there. And let's go ahead and create the place for the total tax that they'll be charged and the net pay. 
right along those, and this is where we'll output our results. Okay. So I wanted you to see both ways of collecting data from the user. One is an input box, the other way is to simply grab it from the sheet itself. No reason that we had to use both other than just for practice. So lastly, we need to do this for one more, tax rate. Now these names, I've capitalized them, you don't have to capitalize them. You can, they can be whatever you want as they follow the proper naming conventions, meaning you have no spaces. Uh, they can't end with uh, numbers or word characters. They should start. With, they should sorry. They should begin with text. Okay. So, step one: collect the inputs. We've created the variables, and these steps will gather the values from the user. So this is a good point to stop and debug and make sure that our function is currently working as it should. So go to View and click Locals window to open up this window down here that will tell us the values of our variables as we move through the function. So uh, those who are in uh, Windows or Excel for Windows, the way we debug and step through our function is we place our cursor somewhere anywhere in the function and we hit F8. Okay, I know it's different on a Mac, and I can't remember the shortcut off the top of my head, but for both Mac and PC users, to step through, you simply come up to the debug window, and you want to find out where it says step into, and the shortcut will be right here next to it. I think it's Command-Shift-I or something like that for a Mac. So you could just click this each time, and it'll begin the debug process, or you can hit that shortcut. So notice, the first time I hit it, it recognizes my three variables down here. Employee name, gross pay, and tax rate, and currently the values are set to their defaults um, because because en is a string, it gives us open, close, double quotes with no, with nothing in them, and then gross pay and tax rate are types of numbers, and so we get zeros. Here's our data types over here. So we want to step through one at a time and make sure that the variables are created correctly and the values are getting stored as they should. So in order to do that, let's first put values over in the worksheet. So if it's going to get gross pay and tax rate from here, let's put them in. So gross pay, uh, this will be for the year. We'll put in uh, 60000 This is currency. So it's net pay. I'm going to go ahead and format these as currency. Tax rate and tax. Actually, tax should be a currency as well. Tax rate should be a percentage. There we go. Okay, so tax rate, let's make it um, for 60,000, I'm just guessing here, 15%. All right, so back to our code. When, when one of these uh, lines in the function is yellow, that means we're currently in uh, break, mode or break mode or debug mode. So um, we can notice we can also hit stop right here to break out of debug mode, and then it clears everything out of the locals window. But let's go ahead and hit F8 or Command-Shift-I and enter back in. So uh, next we hit F8 again to continue stepping through the program. Notice it skipped over this line. That's because it already recognized each of those values simply when we started the function. And the break mode or the debug mode simply goes from one um, process to another. It doesn't need to cover this line, basically. So with this line highlighted in yellow, this means it hasn't run this line yet, and it's about to. So if we hit F8 again, it should pop up an input box. There we go. What's the employee's name? Put in your name. I can't remember. Oh, well. I hit OK. OK, now look down here. It's moved on to the next line. Notice that in the, in the locals window, it says the value of EN is now Santa Claus, like we typed. That's working correctly as it should. Okay, hit F8 again. Ah, now notice that GP, process that line, GP is now equal to 60,000, which is the value we put over here on the worksheet. So it's properly grabbing that value and storing it in, the, in this variable right here. We hit it once more, and now there we go, tax rate is stored at 0.15 as it should be. So, so far, so good, our, our program's working correctly. So let's stop this, or you can either hit the stop button or F8 just to finish it and exit out. Okay, let's move on to perform the processing. So initially we're going to make this something just very simple. Uh, we know um, 
we're going to want to calculate the total tax and the net pay. So I'm going to dim and create two more variables right here, although we could have simply added these variables up here at the top. That's perfectly acceptable. Um, just come up with a convention that you'd like to follow and stick to it. So if we have variables we need for processing later, you might choose to simply dim them later on when you actually need them. But as long as they're dimmed before they're used, you're just fine. It can be dimmed anywhere before it's used. So uh, let's make sure I get these names right from the flowchart. NP for net pay, tax for tax, okay? And NP as, that's going to be currency, and tax as also as currency. Okay, so net pay, we're going to assign a value and do our processing now. Net pay is going to equal, well, logically, it would be gross pay. Actually, sorry, I need to perform and calculate tax work, don't I? Let's do tax. Tax will equal the gross pay times the tax rate. So again, if, if I'm making 60000 well, anyway, it'll be 60000 times 15%. That's the total tax being paid. Once we know the total tax being paid, then we can calculate net pay. And say net pay is going to equal gross pay minus the total tax paid. So once again, let's debug and find out if we've done our math correctly. So I'm going to hit F8. Notice that the variables we just created for processing are now included. F8 again. Employee's name. Um, I'm not going to do Santa again. Okay. All right. There's the Easter Bunny. F8 again. It grabbed 60,000. F8 again. It grabbed 0.15. Now, notice it skipped over the dim statement again. Now it's going to calculate the tax rate. There we go, 9,000 on 60,000. So on the year, this person should be paying 9,000 in taxes. 0 0.0004, that's interesting. There we go. Now net pay, 50,000, it'll round up to 50,000, uh, 51,000. Um, so F8 one more time, those numbers look close enough. Those will round up correctly. Go back to the worksheet here. Okay, the so last step. We've performed the processing. If you wanted to, you could break B up into create the variables needed for processing, which is what we did here. In fact, maybe I'll go ahead and do that just to be consistent. 2A, create the variables needed for processing. Whoops, there we go. And then let's move this into to B. Actually, process the values. Okay. Now we're on to step three, time to output the results. Okay. Typically, we've already created any variables we need to do output um, in here in the previous step. So I don't break step three into two steps typically. Although you might, for some reason, want to create variables down here. I'm sure you could. Uh, here, we just simply need to give the values back. So we can do this either through a message box or by putting the values back into some cells. We created these cells right here, B4 and B5, to print out the results. Let's use those. So we're going to simply take the assignment statement up here and reverse them. So we still want to assign a value, but instead of assigning a cell value into a variable, we're assigning a variable into a cell value. That's what I mean by reverse it. So we're going to say range B4 a value. This is going to equal the tax rate or the total tax being paid that we just created. Secondly, range B5 dot value is going to equal gross pay. And that's it. The results are now output. Let's go ahead and run the function. This time, instead of stepping through, since we've already been doing our debugging as we should uh, throughout the process, and close that down so you can see the whole thing. Um, I'm okay just hitting the run button. So let's hit run again. Your cursor simply needs to be anywhere inside of the function for the run button to work. If you happen to be in, in debug mode, let me hit F8, and you're trying to hit run, it's gonna to wanna to break you out of debug mode first. So you might get a little error that says, 
Oh, never mind. It went ahead and worked anyway. Okay, so I hit play. What is the employee's name? My name. Okay. What happened? Well, it didn't need to pop up a message box to give us a value. It simply printed them out to the worksheet. So all we need to do is go back to the worksheet and see if it printed out the values, tax and gross pay, the way it should. Here we are. There's the numbers uh, properly um, rounded like they should have been. Um, net pay, though. Looks like I didn't do that one right. You probably caught my mistake, right? Let's go back. What did I do wrong? Well, we come down here to the output. We see, okay, right here. Because I debugged all along, I, knew, I know that my problem has got to be somewhere with these last two lines. It's not going to be up here with net pay because I already tested that out and I know that net pay worked just fine. So I can zero in my my search for a problem to these last two lines. I look down here and you can probably figure it out. Take a second. Hopefully it only took a second. <laughs> so I've printed out gross pay instead of net pay. Net pay is still being calculated correctly, I just didn't put the right variable in here to print it out. So let's change that to net pay, whoops, N. And let's run our function again. Play. What is your name? Okay. Why am I putting in my name if we never print it out? Right? That's silly. I should have put a box to print out the name. Let's do that next here. I'm going to hit OK. Let's go back to the worksheet. There we go. Now net pay is being printed out properly. Let's add one more place for name. Let's go ahead and give that a colon there. And in our last step, think for a second. What am I going to do to print out the name? First of all, do I have it stored somewhere? Yes, I do, right here. Let's just copy this, paste it down, and say cell B6 is going to be equal to employee name. Okay, run it one more time. It's your name, mark, go back, there we go. Print it out like everything else should be. Last thing I want to do with you, let's make this function run on a button. Nobody wants to run a function from the VBA editor. Okay, an average user wants a button or some other event to make a function work. So let's add one. You should have watched that video by now, too, but if not, just watch me and follow along. Then go to the Developer tab and Insert, and I have these button options, op, uh, uh, options here. Remember, I don't have to use these. I could also just go create a shape and assign, um, assign a, a, a macro to it or, or a sub, but I'll just use this one. So I selected the button, I draw it out. Once I draw it out, this assign macro box comes up and it says, here's all of the functions or subs that we recognize in your workbook. Okay, which one do you want it to run when people click this button? Well, this is the one we just created. I want it to calc net pay. Okay. Notice at this point, I can still edit the text here on the button. If you click off of it and you lose that editing mode, don't worry, just come back and right click on it. And then you can edit the text call this calc you late pay oops need that just click off of it and then it's finished okay so let's put a different value in here we just got a raise to whoops all right no problem 800,000 calc pay this is somebody who makes more money than me he probably makes even more than that though there we go the tax Actually, his tax rate is probably something higher than that, too. If he's making that much, it's going to be more like 30%, uh, I'm guessing. Calc pay. There we go. And look into why we're getting this little rounding issue here. That's not normal, but that's okay. Let's not worry about that for now. So I hope you've learned from this a couple of things. First of all, how to translate a flowchart into VBA code. Notice that each step directly relates to executable code that we can write. This is why it's so critical that both the IT people and the business people, IT side and business side, both understand flowcharts. This is the great translation between them. If both sides understand how to make a chart, which are these are pretty simple, then the business side can actually create flowcharts for how they want their process to work and simply give these to the IT side for them to for them to create. 
So the other thing I want you to learn from this is how to put together um, everything that we've done into the input processing output model. Go back here and just again take a quick look. So we have three overall steps. Collect the inputs, perform the processing, output the results. And I've broken step one and step two into two halves. First creating the variables that you'll need to collect inputs and then second using assignment statements to initialize these variables to the values that uh, they will need. Same thing here in the processing step. Now, um, you don't have to, again, um, I, we've done this sort of the long way, you don't actually have to um, create these variables. There are shortcuts you can take, and we're not going to grade you higher or lower for using shortcuts. Let me give you a quick example. Um, down here, we actually could perform the processing right here as we output the values. For example, let me uh, delete all this just for a second. Don't do this on yours. But I'm going to come down here and say, okay, the tax is going to be equal to gross pay times tax rate. And there I'm doing the processing right there in the output. So net pay is going to be equal to gross pay minus gross pay times tax rate. Am I not accomplishing the exact same thing there? So in this case, I've combined steps two and three together into perform processing and output the results. Um, I'm not going to tell you that one way is better than the other. Um, there are actually reasons for and against. Any way you do it that makes it work for your, for your test and final exam is perfectly fine with me. Um, I just want you to see uh, how this can be done. We like to break it out into the long way just so you can see each step one at a time and make sure you follow uh, the, you know, the process. That's it. Let's move on to another example.